After that melodious song, I request you all to come down to earth. And this is a story which is my story, original. And uh, uh, Google had a competition and about 3,000 people participated from 10 states in India. And when we went to the center, we were told we'll be given 20 words and 30 minutes time. And whether we could write a short story, a poem, an article, it was left to our choice. I wrote the short story. And the three of us from India won the prize, one from Delhi, one from Hyderabad, and one from Bangalore. And I was one of them. The cash prize was 75,000 rupees. I was so taken aback, but they deducted the tax at the source. <laughs> so, the title of the story is Sita's Dilemma. Well, Sita stood near the French window and looked out. She was in the 13th floor of her apartment, and she could look into the central park. And she saw many couples kissing each other, some of them holding hands and going, strolling together, and mothers with their babies in their cribs, and the children playing around. And she looked at her own baby, Nina, sleeping happily and with a smile on her face in the crib. And then she wondered, how is it that her husband never took her for a never accompanied on a, for a, for a walk, never took her to a restaurant, never took her to a movie, but he was all the time engrossed, involved in his own career as a doctor. He was undergoing uh, training and he felt that he had to become a very successful doctor, a cardiac thoracic surgeon of great repute and be one of the best in New York City. So for him, all other things were secondary. He had overvaulting ambition, as Shakespeare would say. And poor Sita had to do everything herself. And she realized that coming to New York, coming to the USA, was not all that a big dream. They were both students in Madras Medical College. He was a year senior to her. But he was the one who teased her. And her friend Anu told her, Sita, look, that guy is all the time following you. He's, when you go to the library, when you go to the canteen and the playground. So he seems to be really obsessed with you. So one day in the library, he came up to her and said, I would like to know you better. And I want to get, uh, you know, be, be your friend. And Sita agreed. He was a tall, handsome man, well built with good features, sportsman, and he took part in all the competitions and won prizes. And Sita, on the other hand, small maid, demure, with pretty features and lovely dark hair. And then they continued being friends. And both of them graduated, and one day he proposed to her. And she accepted, and their parents also accepted because he was also a doctor. And they planned the wedding in a five-star hotel. They printed 1,000 invitations and distributed in three cities. Just a week before the wedding, Ramachandra, his name, he dropped in <clears throat> at Sita's parents' and grandparents' house and said, I want the wedding to be canceled. And they were in a state of shock. It was a bombshell. How can a person come and tell in the last minute that the wedding has to be postponed? What's the reason? He said, my father came to know that Sita is from a different community and he had a heart attack and therefore I don't want to harm him. I mean, if anything happens to him, I would never forgive myself. So the grandfather made him sit down and said, young man, we also as a family have certain reputation. You can't come in the last minute and cancel a wedding. And what about your own character, your own reputation? So you better agree for a marriage. If you don't want your father to know, let it be a secret wedding in a temple. And it was done, and the marriage was registered. And both of them left for New York. 
And Sita always wondered, why is it that her husband didn't have the courage, the guts to stand up to his father and say, yes, I will marry her. And then her husband explained to her that my mother passed away when I was 11 years old due to an accident, fire accident. And my father sent me to school the next day. He wouldn't even allow me to grieve for my mother's loss. And I had to be a topper in school and college. Otherwise, he would punish me. So my whole life's ambition is to show that I would be a successful cardiac thoracic surgeon and I would earn lots and lots of money. So when Sita heard this story, she felt, oh my God, at least God has blessed me with a little beautiful baby. And her name was Nina. And she doted on her. She took on the responsibility. She did everything. But there was always that resentment as to why he could not stand up to his dad. Why he could not take her, take her to his home and say that this is the girl I will marry. And because of his ambition, he totally neglected her and the child. And he wanted her to take up a job. She passed the USMLE exam. And he said, now it's time for you to go and work. She said, no, I want to spend the first three years of my life with my baby. She suddenly tried to recall when the abuse started. It started with small arguments. If she said anything about his dad, if she said anything about their wedding that he managed to ruin, he would abuse her physically. And then if she failed in her driving test, so he abused her. And finally, the worst thing that happened to her was when he told her that he should go and work. And she said, no, I'm a mother. I love to enjoy my motherhood. I will not go back to work, even though I might have passed my exam. I'm not going to earn money for the first three years. And you have to accept that. He was in such a temper that he banged the wooden door, which was four inches thick. And it hit her on the forehead and blood splattered on the ground. And Sita tried to wipe the blood. And he said, you come. I think she will need stitches to be put. I'll take you to the hospital. But do not say anything about my being abusive. And when she, Sita went to the hospital, the doctor looked at her suspiciously. She said, what happened? Was it domestic abuse? He said, oh, no. You know, I ran to pick up my baby and I hit my head against the door. That was a very big lie. And she wondered later on when she came home, why did she say that? For fear that the police might arrest him. For fear that her little baby might, have been, might be taken away from her. And she was alone in New York, USA, the most prosperous country in the world. She didn't know where to turn to whom to turn to. And then she picked up her baby and held her close to her heart. Little Nina opened her eyes and she looked at her mother and smiled and her chubby little hands touched her cheek as if to say, Mommy, I'm here for you. And then Sita decided it's time for her to take a break and for herself and for the sake of her baby. She waited patiently. She heard her husband's footsteps on the corridor. Her, she shivered uncontrollably, but she decided today will be the final day. I have taken my decision. And the door opened, and Sita faced him with a little baby. Thank you. The 20 words that were given one of the words was abuse. So I picked up that and wrote this story. Thank you.